are here to celebrate the signing of Senate Bill 6. We take a step towards equity for the athletes that we cheer on. As a former college basketball player, I am thrilled for the student athletes who will benefit from this legislation. For generations, student athletes worked and worked, but were never, never able to capitalize on the revenue that they generated from their schools and communities. Last June, we started to see that in Kentucky. Following the Supreme Court landmark decision, Governor Shear was the first governor in the nation to act by signing an executive order to immediately allow student athletes to receive compensation. Today, that becomes law in Kentucky. This bipartisan agreement is an example of what can happen when we come together and work for Kentuckians. So, let's get to it. I'm going to turn it over to Governor Bishop. Represented here today, uh, regardless of which one that you are a intense fan of, uh, you make the Commonwealth, each and every one of you, and all of your players so proud. <laughs> and as we are here today in person without masks, I just want to thank so many of our coaches, athletic directors, presidents, and leaders uh, for stepping up in a difficult time showing a great example. Uh, we greatly appreciate your leadership and you did it in the most difficult of moments. So we're here today to celebrate teamwork, cooperation, and the flawless execution of game plan. Something some of these folks in this room know about a lot better than I do. In just a moment, I will sign Senate Bill 6 into law, allowing our great student athletes to be fairly compensated for the use of their name, image, and likeness. Your image and your name are yours, given to you by God and your parents. And today we recognize each and every one of those individuals. Senate Bill 6 codifies the rights I extended to student athletes last year. On June 24th, I was proud to be the first governor in the nation to address this issue by signing an executive order. About a week later, after other states followed our lead, the NCAA announced it would not block those steps. Before taking action, though, I listened. I listened to leaders in higher education. I listened to our coaches and to our athletic directors, and most importantly, to the student athletes themselves, like the University of Kentucky's Ryan Howard, who is here with us today. Two times as you see. Kentucky, both making us proud, and good job to Moorhead on a great finish and a great season. We got this close to having Northern Kentucky University that has had such an amazing last decade uh, as a conference champion as well. We are proud of you, we are rooting for you, and we will continue to support you. another champion in the house. You may see the trophy right here. And that's because Bellarmine 
Ellerman beat Jacksonville 77-72 last night to win the Atlantic Sun Conference Championship. I said, this is pretty incredible, coach, to do just two years into D1. He said, yeah, Andy, but I did it in the pandemic, too. <laughs> and given the executive order got us where we are today, I think we ought to look at one to put you guys in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and again, last night, U of L men beat Georgia Tech in the first round of the ACC tournament and take on Virginia tonight. These are just some examples of how far our teams are going this year. March Madness has just started, and spring practice is now underway. Each and every one of these coaches told me this had to be this morning for either travel plans or practice. University of Kentucky's men's team is set to open up SEC tournament play Friday night in Tampa. The U of L women are projected to be a top seed in the NCAA tournament, which coach tells me means they're going to host their first couple of games in the Young Center. We look forward to seeing that. <laughs> and when you're governor and you start saying congratulations to one team, I really start worrying about leaving another out. But I want to thank, again, each one of these programs each year uh, for putting our student athletes first, and that's truly what this bill does. So today we're here to once again focus on what happens when Team Kentucky works together. Executive branch, legislative branch. I remember talking to the leaders of both uh, the House and the Senate, both of the majority and the minority, as we were putting together that executive order with a plan when the General Assembly came into session to do just what has happened. That executive order ensured our schools were not at a competitive disadvantage during a pretty highly competitive recruiting season. And it also gives our student athletes the same rights and opportunities that they can find in other states. This new law will codify that. It will ensure the same and that every individual athlete's name, image, and likeness are their own and no one else's. For decades, student athletes, unlike their peers, were barred from pursuing compensation associated with skills and talents. And unlike most of their non-athlete peers, student athletes are the main attraction what is a multi-billion dollar industry in this country. While there have been some well-intentioned reasons for these rules, especially over time, the effects have become increasingly burdensome and hard to justify. You have all done your part. The student athletes and coaches in this room have done their jobs and stood up for their players. They've been building strength and growing their individual skills, these players, they, these coaches have been recruiting and building organizations that win games and championships. they created environments good for our student athletes and earned reputations that draw fans by the thousands and bring a sense of community to their schools and a sense of pride to our state. I received a lot of help and support from university and athletic communities. I want to thank Justin for a couple by name, UK Athletic Director Mitch Barnhart, Murray State University President Bob Jackson, UK men's basketball coach John Calipari, UK women's basketball coach Kyra Elsie, UK football coach Martin Stoops, UL head, UL head football coach Scott Satterfield, and Josh Hurd, the interim athletic director at UFL. Just a couple of the many people who are here that talked with me and these legislators in the early days to make sure that we could get this right. Uh, also, here with us today is Ken Bothoff. Did I? Yeah, I did. No, tell me. I won't get on. <laughs> yeah? It's Bothoff, yeah. No, you're close. Director of Athletics from Northern Kentucky uh, University. We have Darren Horn, our coach for the men's team at Northern Kentucky University. Scott Davenport, championship winning men's basketball coach at Bellarmine University. Jamie Gordon, athletic director and volleyball coach at Moorhead State University. Anybody else's AD coach too? <laughs> Darren Horn, men's basketball coach, MKU. It's twice. Jay Morgan, president, Moorhead State University. Mark Stoops, football coach for UK. Jeff Falls, women's basketball coach for U of L. Scott Wygan, director of athletics, Bellarmine University. Walt Wells, football coach, Eastern Kentucky University. And those aren't the only people that we've got to make sure that we thank today and you're going to hear from a number of them. 
as we work through this uh, help from leaders such as House Speaker David Osborne, Senate Minority Former Leader Morgan McGarvey, House Minority Former Leader uh, Joni uh, Jenkins, uh, Senate President Robert Stivers, and I want to specifically thank those that ushered this legislation through. In the Senate, Senators Wise and Senator McGarvey for sponsoring the legislation, and the House from Dan Palombo. This is what happens when we show just a little bit of the teamwork we see in each of these programs right here in Frankfurt. Today is a good day, not just for these programs, but for every student athlete currently there and those that are coming. Let's make sure that we continue to embrace these programs. Let's make sure that we provide opportunities to these student athletes, both in their education and getting them on a sound financial footing so that we ensure that every single student athlete ever comes to Kentucky to participate in one of these programs has a productive, exciting life, and hopefully never forgets the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Congratulations, everybody. Make no mistake about it, this is a great day in Kentucky sports history. Um, as we get started, you know, you have all these wonderful teams, all these wonderful coaches represented. And so, picking your favorite team from this podium is like somebody asking you who's your favorite child. You got one, but you just shouldn't say it publicly. <laughs> um, not that you guys have multiple kids. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't get back to what Dick O'Neill said, that all politics is local. If I didn't give a special shout out to my coach at Bellarmine University for what they did last night winning the championship. <laughs> and if you're in Kentucky, you know this is the most wonderful time of the year. But we gotta do more than wish our teams and our student athletes good luck. We have to put in place the policies that allow our universities to compete and our student athletes to be treated fairly. And that's what's happening. I think what you've seen happen is an example of how policy should happen in Kentucky, with everyone coming together. Governor, you led on this issue to the executive And we are so grateful for your leadership on that. You know, what people didn't know is that the governor's office was reaching out to the legislators who worked on this issue previously before the executive order said, what have you guys done? You heard him talk about reaching out to the schools and how to get this right. And then, of course, when the executive order was issued, we knew that we needed to put this in law. So everybody knows that student athletes will have the rights to their own name, image, and likeness. These student athletes who work so hard at their sport, who can't have another job when they're in college, have the ability to control their name, image, and likeness, have the ability to earn some extra money. And that's what Senator Wise and I got together, right, and said, how do we get together with the governor's office, with the universities in the state, and make sure that these protections are here for these student athletes forever? I think one part about this process, when we're talking about sports, this was a team, right? This was a team from the staff, Josh Collins, who worked so hard, who were behind the scenes this entire time, working to make sure this legislation came on board. You had Democrats and Republicans. You had universities who might compete against each other on the court coming together and to say, how can we get the best law to protect our kids? You had the governor reaching across the legislative branch. Right? This was a team effort. And never once did someone say, who's going to get the credit? This was about the kids. This was about making sure that student athletes get control over their name, image, and likeness, and that Kentucky can lead the way, not just on the court, but off it, in making sure our student athletes are treated fairly. Um, it's been a wonderful part to be a process of, it's been a wonderful part to be with these coaches, and we, as we wish you good luck at your tournaments, we're gonna wish you more than that. We're gonna wish you continued success for your programs and for your student athletes. I think this is a great day in Kentucky, and it's a great way to make sure you see everybody coming together as a team to support what we are. Because if you're a Kentucky, you know this is the most wonderful time of the year.
but you know that you're not a pro sports state. We love college sports. College sports is part of the fabric of the tapestry of who we are. And this makes sure that our student athletes and our college programs can succeed for years to come. legislation. Uh, Senator McGarvey, I always look forward to working with you across the aisle uh, in a bipartisan manner. I'm hoping that you take this piece of legislation on to possibly your next career path in the U.S. Congress so we can see action done at the federal level of what else that may provide. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, it is correct. I, I was born into a coaching family. Uh, my mother coached for 32 years uh, at Campbell Sioux University, the only place where she coached, but became the all-time state winningest women's college basketball coach. Uh, and I never thought when I was campaigning or being in office I ever would have a piece of legislation that would relate to athletics. My wife was a college basketball player who actually played with Coach Elsie on the Kentucky All-Star team that played against Indiana. You can see I did not have the success of my mother and my wife, but I do have a piece of legislation that I can say that I was happy uh, to champion through the Senate with working with my colleagues from both the House and the Senate. Um, this is a phenomenal day uh, for every one of us that are here. It's a phenomenal day for our student athletes. This will allow flexibility. It allows flexibility for universities and student athletes to work together. It'll provide a framework for life skills, for financial literacy, for helping those student athletes. I think it'll also be beneficial for those student athletes that may be teetering on making that decision whether to make a jump or to stay put, that it can help compensate. It can help those families, it can help those student athletes achieve their dreams and still be on a track to attain a college degree while here within the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we do hear a lot about this being very beneficial for our flagship universities, but also look at the benefit it can provide a Northern Kentucky University, a Moorhead State, a Murray State, or our regional universities as they can partner and work with student athletes. This is a changing landscape. These coaches will, will they, they know that firsthand. Transfer portal, NIL, it changes daily. And this legislation, I think, will also continue to change as we move forward. I'll be hoping to working once again with my colleagues across the aisle and in the house because I don't think this is over with NIL. I think next session we may have to make some tweaks working with the governor's office on any things we can do to strengthen this piece of legislation. And Coach Cal made the comment that this is model legislation and I do think other states can look to Kentucky. The way we did this, the way we worked together, and the way we put our student athletes first with our university's best interest in mind. It is an honor to be here. I do also want to echo Senator McGarvey's comments on Josh Collins. He's the gentleman back in the yellow sweatshirt. They are the bill drafters. They are the ones that do the research. We're the ones that may go down with credit by our names beside a bill. But if we do not have like a good coach, a good supporting staff behind the scenes, Josh, thank you. And to our Legislative Research Commission. Once again, thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you also to Representative Palumbo, Representative Bowley, other members of the House are able to carry this through. I look forward to also getting the resolution that is on the F-1 visa issue for international students to help those individuals. It's another issue that needs to be addressed. We plead to our U.S. Congress members. This is for all student athletes, not just those within these borders, but those that come to the United States of wanting to achieve their dreams and to play college sports allow those students to prosper as much as our students here within the United States. Thank you all so much. God bless.
spent far more time on the sidelines than I have in the capital, so I'm going to say that's about the politics today. And we're going to hear from the coaches and players uh, who are, who are I know, are really, very excited to be here with us. So first up, a man who needs no introduction um, is UK basketball coach John Calipari and his lucky watch. <laughs> This was leadership. Um, when you talk about leadership, it's there's a void, and I'm willing to step up. Our governor with the executive order, Senator Wise, and Senator McGarvey work with you. Josh. I got to give you a shout out. <laughs> um, Representative Palumbo from our own district. Um, this was near, nearly unanimous. That's a word bipartisan. I didn't even know it still existed. <laughs> this thing was across the board for student athletes, but it protected universities. It protected students. You may not know this, you gotta look deep. They, they went and said, if you sign a contract in our state and you go pro, you can get out of that contract. I mean, they went deep in how do we protect these young people? But how do we give them the opportunity? The flexibility in this bill, like wow. Because things are moving and they're moving fast. Um, I believe it's model legislation that will be looked at now to say, well, we can do this. There's protection on both sides. There's an ability for student athletes to say, wait a minute, let, let's get together and see if this is the right thing to do. I'd say to all the coaches and administrators and presidents that were involved in this, thank you. I say all to the, all the athletes, you now have an opportunity not just to make money, to be trained, to be learned as you go forward. Um, again, I just want to thank everybody. And how about our women's basketball? just a terrific basketball player. She is a terrific person. Kind, humble, and she can play. I wish <laughs> I had. Thank you, Bridget. that we partner with. Nothing came to her. She put backpacks together with her teammates of little items for a start your school year and took those down and gave those out to every student at the elementary school. I think so many people think it's all about what the student athlete can get. Now it's more so also what they can give back. And I hope everyone will, will realize that. This is a wonderful bill. It's a wonderful opportunity for our student athletes to finally be able to make a little money off their name, their image. But it's also an opportunity for them to give back. Because all I ever hear with this is they're going to make money, they're going to make money. Well, it also gives them that chance to give. And it's just as important in life to give as it is to receive. And I think you're going to find out what special athletes we have in this commonwealth who are going to give back to the community and support them. Because at this point in time, we can sign autographs, they can take pictures, but now they're able to do bigger and better things. So I want to say thank you to our governor, lieutenant governor, everyone that was involved in this bill. 
help get this passed. And want to wish all of the coaches here the best of luck. Tyra, Ryan, I was fortunate to coach Ryan in, in summer basketball, USA basketball, and Shumai, I need to coach Tyra for two summers. <laughs> uh, she was a pretty good player. So I just want to say thank you for this opportunity and wish everyone the best. Thank you. Senate Bill 6 really sets forth student athlete opportunities. We're proud of that. All of us are in the student success business, including the student athlete business. But more importantly, it sets forth guardrails. Guardrails that all of us will utilize as we steer the ship of really uncertainty as we go forth in uh, collegiate athletics. It definitely is a new world in that aspect of collegiate athletics. As my fellow presidents and I sit around and we try to operationalize legislation and policy, oftentimes it's difficult. It's difficult to implement a number of things on a university campus, but I'm proud to say in, in reviewing and reading this bill and with the input that every entity provided, every single entity, we believe that this is a model piece of legislation that we can operationalize on our campus and that it will be great for so thank you to everybody who included higher education in this. Thank you to the leadership of the legislative bodies and also to you, Governor. I just want the four points back. Yeah. <laughs> 